Sevilla. Hi, I'm Nadia Fraser. Hi, I'm Ira Nadira. Hello, my name is Ivan. Hi, Assalamualaikum. We are from K1 G6. First of all, thank you for watching our videos. For our first year project, we are required to make a video about four assignments which consist of three major departments in Civil Engineering UTM. The first one is Structural and Material Department. The second one is Water and Environmental Department. And the third one is Geotechnic and Transportation Department. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The first one is Structural and Material Department. Structural Engineering is that part of Civil Engineering that educate the structural engineers to create the boats and muscles of a man-made structures. Basically, structural engineering is about analyzing, designing, researching, and planning structural system and structural components to achieve design goals and ensure the safety and comfort of users. So for the first assignment, which is structural and material engineering assignment, it needs us to find a building and calculate the dead slots. So we have choose this building, M48. As I mentioned earlier, in this assignment, we need to calculate the weight of a building. But how to calculate the weight of a building? We actually need to find the volume of a building. The volume of M48. Calculate the weight of the building. We actually divide the building into a few sub, which is beam, column, walls, and also the slab. So, each of the sub, we calculate the volume and we total up and we gain the total volume of a building. But, we have neglected some of the subs, which is the stairs, the roof because we actually need to find the dead slots of the building and after gain all the total weight we multiply with the density of concrete and we gain the weight of the building that's how assignment about structure and materials engineering geotechnical engineering which generally deals with natural material near the Earth's surface. It utilizes the principle of soil mechanics and rock mechanics in building safe, economical, and environmentally sustainable buildings, retaining structures and earth structures. Transportation and highway engineering is a broad discipline which involves planning, designing, construction, operation, maintenance and control of transportation facilities to ensure provision of safe, economical, effective and efficient as well as environmentally sustainable transport services. Hi, for the second assignment, we need to describe about the way to improve the, the soil layer. As a civil engineer, we need to construct the safest road for everyone. To have the safest road for everyone, we need to have the safest and the strongest layer of the bottomless layer, which is the soil. The first method is pre-compression and consolidation. There are various techniques for this method and two of it is vertical drain and dynamic consolidation. The second method is soil reinforcement. So, enforcement is very important to improve the stiffness and the strength of the soil. The weak soil we enforce using the high strength thin horizontal membrane to have the strongest soil layer. The third method is chemical stabilization. Chemical stabilization is a process where the soil is mixed with the cement, the lime, and the fly ash or others. The next method is gate mixing method. It involves the stabilization of the soil in large steps. 
wet or dry binder is injected into the ground and blended with the in situ soft salt. For the last method is grouping and injection. It involves injection of pumpable materials into the salt. It is done with suspension grids, which includes grids with salt, salt cement mixes, lime, and others. That's all for assignment 2. Thank you. Water and Environmental Department has to do with water resources development and management. It also yields analysis, river hydraulics, design of hydraulic structures such as dams, tunnels and pump stations, water services, water quality and water treatment. So my part is on coastal erosion. Basically what is coastal erosion? Coastal erosion is the loss of sub-area landmass into a sea or lake due to natural processes such as waves, winds and tides or even due to human interference. So there are four types of coastal erosion. First is hydraulic pressure, Second is attrition, next is abrasion, and last is corrosion. The first one is a hydraulic pressure. Hydraulic pressure is a result from a large wave, curling beach, or eroded materials against cliff. The second one is abrasion. Abrasion is from waves, cause rocks and pebbles to bump into each other and wear down in size. The third one is corrosion. Corrosion is the sheer force of the waves, especially when they trap and compress air in the holes and cracks in a cliff. The fourth one is attrition. Attrition happens when the type of rock used in a cliff is actually dissolved by the seawater. The solution of the coastal erosion problem is called land reclamation. Land reclamation is also called as landfill. Land reclamation is a process of creating new land from ocean, riverbeds, and lake beds. Dredging is one of the methods of land reclamation. Dredging is removal of sediment and debris from the bottom of lakes, rivers, harbors, and other water bodies. So, how does dredge work? Firstly, dredges with dredge channel at the river mouths. Next, the soil from the dredge channel is then transferred to a part of coastal erosion for reclamation. The reclaimed part is then covered by geotextile followed by smaller stones as the underlayer. Lastly, the rock armor is then put on the geotextile. Thank you, that's all from me. For the fourth assignment, we need to discuss about one sub goals from 17 goals under UN Sustainable Development. Goals. Goals number six, clean water and sanitation is choose. And the sub goals that we discuss is 6.3, which is by 2030, improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminate dumping, minimize the release of hazardous chemical and materials, halving the proportion of untreated wastewater, and increase recycling and safe use globally. There's a lot of issues related to water quality problem in Malaysia. One of the issues that we chose is in Sungai Gombak, Selangor. Based on Shalin's article in 2017, Sungai Gombak is constricted with rubbish and the water quality in the surrounding area is under threat. The Drainage Irrigation Department DIT Director Azmi Ibrahim said most rivers in Klang Valley have water quality index classification of class 3 which is polluted and needs treatment immediately. The solution that can be done by the government to overcome this water problem is by monitoring the wastewater treatment and another one is enable stricter enforcement law to those who cause water pollution in the water supply area. And after that, the society also should make some effort by reduce the use of chemical pesticide at their yard. Another one is do an appropriate disposal of hazardous material while keep it away from the water supply. Other than that, one self should responsible by practically do recycling to reduce plastic usage and chemical pollution in the groundwater. 
then help to plant bushes or any other plant to reduce erosion and improve the health of the water. To conclude, by doing it together, we should achieve the goals by the targeted year, which is 2030, and get a clean water for all. As a conclusion, through the four assignments that we have discussed already for this, we have been exposed to new things in civil engineering that can prepare us to enhance our learning process. It generates our ideas to be more creative and innovative in solving problems. All these subfields work together to make a success as every subfield has its own specialization. That's all from us. Thanks for watching our videos.